Good morning guys, we're back at it again with another video. It's our monsoon season. Man, it's been so nice. We've had so much cloud coverage, so much rain so far. I think I've measured that we've had almost about three inches of rain so far in the monsoon season. So our water tanks are definitely starting to fill up and uh, we should probably get at least another maybe two or three inches towards the, uh, towards the end of July here. So you can see I got the shade sail up on the steel pergola. Pretty simple installation, just some eye bolts through the steel beams here or the steel posts and then just a turnbuckle uh, just to tighten it up there. I think the size of this is eight by 12, eight feet by 12 feet. So it doesn't fully cover the entire space, but we really don't use this space that much during the day. It's typically in the morning or in the evening that we use this space. So what I'm gonna be working on today and hopefully finish is we're gonna be running some electricity coming from, the, uh, coming from our shed where our main AC panel is and trenching a line out underground and running some wires out here for the pergola. So the plan here is to run some three quarter inch conduit all the way out here to a box that is going to have a GFCI receptacle in it. And then we're gonna come up here with another box and we're gonna have just a dimmer switch. And all the way up at the top here, we're gonna have another box that I'm gonna be able to uh, plug some lights into. So I'm probably just gonna use the same lights that we use around our fire pit, but we'll be able to have a nice kind of lighted space out here and it'll be beautiful. So one thing that we wanna keep in mind is that when we're running electrical wires over such a long distance, it's about 150 feet from the pergola to the shed there. I know that just by running extension cords out here, is that what happens is that there is a voltage drop that incurs um, basically over a long length of wire like that. So the way that we prevent a voltage drop over that long length of wire is through upsizing the wire. Now I'm just running a 15 amp circuit here and typically on a 15 amp circuit, you're gonna run 14 gauge wire. So we're gonna bump it up to uh, 12 gauge wire. And the main reason why you wanna upsize these wires for the voltage drop is that if you're running certain components that don't do too well with a voltage drop. So for example, at the shed there, the circuit's gonna be 120 volts. I think our inverter pumps out 121 or something like that. It's always right around 120. Over that long distance, if you incur more than a 3% voltage drop, that could potentially be an issue for certain motors and components that is being run at the end of that wire. So we're not gonna be running any motors or big equipment out here. Primarily what we're gonna be running is a little boom box that we're gonna be plugging into the one receptacle and some lights there. So I'm not really too concerned about going, getting a huge upsize on the wire in order to prevent that voltage drop. Make sure you stay with me on this video because I'm gonna be dropping some nuggets of gold in this video, especially if you're curious about running wires across a very long distance like this. I've got some, uh, I've got some cool ideas and some cool little tips that I'm gonna give you guys. So right here I'm using an inch and a quarter auger bit to drill through the, uh, through the floor in the shed. And my favorite part is always digging out trenches by hand here, but I only have to do a little bit, just this four or five feet right here, which is really nice. I'm just using some marking paint just to know exactly where I wanna be digging the trench out with the backhoe. Um, just having that visually there just makes it a lot easier. In the bottom of the main AC panel, there's only a half inch knockout, but I need a three quarter inch hole. So the easiest way to do it is just to use a step up bit. Hole saws are not really good for trying to bore out bigger holes. And a big thanks to my business partner, Liam, for leaving this, uh, this heat gun so that I can heat up the PVC pipe 
um, when you want to make an offset using PVC if you just heat it up get it into place and then let it cool while you're holding it One thing that you'll notice that I like to do is when I'm putting pipe into a trench like that is I glue all the pieces um, just on the grade level there. Um, it's just a lot easier than actually trying to glue everything and put everything together while you're in the trench because it's just very easy just to throw the pipe into the trench there. Since the wire run is about 150 plus feet, my fish tape is only 125 feet. So what I'm doing here is I'm running the fish tape through the wire that I've already done. So it's about 70 or 80 feet or so. And then I'm just attaching a poly or a pole line onto the end of it and you'll see me pull that out of the uh, AC panel in a second here. Now I can glue the rest of the pieces that are gonna be going all the way towards the pergola. Again, just gluing up on the ground, making life easier for myself, and then just throwing the pipe right into the trench. So I made my way all the way to the pergola here, and uh, just gluing a 90 onto the end of that PVC pipe. Um, just always buy PVC 90s. Don't try to uh, bend a PVC 90 with a heat gun. So on the end of this 90, I'm gluing on a, a slip connection to a 3 quarter inch threaded connector. And you're going to see me screw in a 3 quarter inch rain tight EMT connector right now. On my conduit bender here, it has a guide for doing offsets. So I need a 5 inch offset, so I'm going to be bending 245 degree angled bends that are 7 inches apart and that's gonna give me my five inch offset that I need. So I'm bending the pipe and then I'm putting it up against the pergola there and just seeing exactly how it's gonna fit and then just making some small adjustments to the pipe so that it is a nice looking offset. This is a pipe reamer, so if you're doing a lot of commercial work with, um, conduit, with EMT conduit, then it deburrs the inside and outside edges, uh, which is really good when you're pulling wires through that they don't get caught on those burrs and it creates a dead short in the wires. So I'm using EMT here and I just really like dislike the look of PVC and just making sure that I use the proper rain tight EMT connectors because these guys are outside. Now I'm just running my fish tape back through the conduit to the midpoint where I have the poly line. Now I'm pulling the poly line over here so that I know basically how long it needs to be. So I attached that poly line onto the end of the fish tape and just pulled it through. Now I'm just gluing that last little connection there and now we have a continuous pull line throughout the entire conduit all the way from the shed to the pergola. Now, an important thing when you're trenching wires is that you want to let people know that there's actually a wire under the ground there. So I'm backfilling the trench about halfway. And the reason why I'm only doing it halfway right now is because right now I'm laying down a red ribbon, which signifies we'll let somebody know that there's something below the wire. I don't have a wire reel yet, so what I did was I just used some concrete stakes, some 2x4s, and you'll see a piece of rebar in a second here that I screwed to the top of the 2x4s in order to create a bit, of a, a bit of a makeshift wire reel. And this is a really good idea if you're going to be running wires by yourself or even with the help of somebody else is to have it on a reel like this. It just makes pulling wire just about a million times easier. And I've had this little pullet um, cover that has little wheels on it so that the wires don't chafe against the box for a while and this is the first time that I got to try it out. Now I'm just removing about three or four inches of the insulation off the end of each of the wires. So the black, the white, and the ground there. And then I'm just wrapping them um, around the poly line, tying them back on themselves and then in a second here you'll see me using electrical tape just to make a really tight connection so that when I'm pulling on those wires they are not going to come loose. I could do an entire video on this because it is a bit of an art 
um, to pull wires through a conduit in order to do it properly. Can you give me a clap? Harder. Come on. There you go. Help feed the wires through. There you go. Yeah, if you keep doing that, whatever you're doing there, just keep doing that. Yeah. Okay. So that helps me out like a million times here. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right, do you want to lube up the wire a little bit? Sure. Lube her up real nice, babe. My favorite part. You love to lube the wire. All right, heave. <laughs> Okay? Alright. Heave. I'm the heave and you're the hoe? Heave, you pull, heave, you push, and hoe, you, you, you stop. Yeah, but am I heave and you're hoe? No, we're both heave. Okay. We're pulling at, we're pulling at the same time. Okay. I just don't want to be the hoe. So pulling the wires up there, I'm just using a piece of 2x4 just so that I can get a good grip on it so it doesn't dig into my hands. Um, but it actually moved through the conduit pretty easily. Normally for using three 12 gauge wires, you'd only need a half inch, but I used three quarter inch conduit to make it easier to pull. You can see Hannah is lubing the wire as it's going into the box and into the conduit, and that really helps on these long wire pulls just to keep the, uh, the wire lubed up and moving through the conduit. So definitely recommend getting some lube for your wire pulls. And having her just feed the wires through also made it a lot easier as well. Now I'm just hooking up another 15 amp breaker for that circuit. Um, it is a really bad practice to double up your circuits. So having multiple circuits under one breaker, it is against code and any inspector is going to fail your electrical um, permit if you do something like that. Just putting the cover back on here. Um, anytime I'm working in an AC panel like that, the, the power is always off. All right guys, next tip that could certainly save you a few dollars. So I've just capped off the top of the outdoor box here, but I'm gonna be running another conduit up. I just don't have time this morning to do it. So you'll see on the back of a GFCI is that there's a the line side and the load side, and the load side is almost always going to have some type of um, sticker or some kind of label over it, just denoting that that is the load side. Um, on the line side here, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be wiring up the plug to the line side. So the ground certainly goes on the bottom, then we have the neutral, and then we have the hot side here. Now, if you want to GFCI protect um, other receptacles by using this same GFCI, so you don't have to keep buying more because these are between $14 to $25 each, depending on what style you get, what features it has, and another receptacle is only like two and a half dollars if you get Decora. So what I'll be doing here is wiring up the line side with these, and then when I come back and rewire this, uh, the dimmer switch and the other receptacle for the lights that I'm gonna put out here, I'm gonna put the hot wire on the load side right here, and then the, the neutral right here, and then obviously the ground will be connected to the other ground here. Also with these outdoor metal boxes, there is a, uh, there's a ground screw in there. So I skin back some of the ground there. Actually, I need a bit more. So just by doing that, now I've got some open ground wire and I'm just going to loop it around the wire here, or loop it around the screw and then tighten her down. We'll attach the ground wire to the GFCI. I'm use our green Robbie to tighten that down. So one other trick for knowing which side is the side for the neutral and for the hot is that the neutral side will have kind of like a, we call, just call it like a white or a silver screw, whereas the hot side will have a bronze colored screw. So that's how you know the difference because I've actually come across receptacles that have been wired um, incorrectly. <laughs> the neutral was on the hot side and the hot was on the neutral side. And for certain components, it doesn't really make a difference. So for certain like lights and stuff, um, you know, certain light bulbs, it, it doesn't matter what side is the, the hot and what side is the neutral. But for pretty well most components, things that are you know, more expensive, um, you definitely need to wire these things up the right way or else, I don't know, it's probably just gonna blow up or components are gonna fry on the inside because you're reversing the polarity on it. 
all low outdoor receptacles. So there's actually a code for the height that they would have to be for them to be non-GFCI protected. But any outdoor receptacles like this either need to be a GFCI or a GFCI protected. So it can be one or the other. Being GFCI protected could just mean it's, it's on the load side of, a, of an already existing GFCI. So how we typically wire at home sometimes would be kind of funny because we'd, we'd minimize the amount of GFCIs that we would use. So we might have an outdoor receptacle and then on the load side of it, it goes to a bathroom receptacle. So if you trip the bathroom one, it goes to the, uh, it, trips, it trips an outdoor receptacle or it could be vice versa. So an outdoor, actually I think it was usually the other way around. But sometimes certain companies that you work for are all about you know, really trying to save money and it's not necessarily about convenience and they just want it to be to code, but they're not too concerned with kind of the, the logic of it because I've traced out wires and stuff in a house and some of them are just really messed up. And I've had outdoor receptacles that are tripping a GFCI that's in an upstairs bathroom and really silly things like that where it's like just spend the extra $10 on a GFCI to save something really confusing like that. So this outdoor cover is called an in-use cover. So what it allows you to do is leave something plugged in at all times. And the GFCI is going to be pretty well protected from any water getting into it. If you're only using the receptacle every once in a while and nothing's really plugged in all the time, then you can just use a regular standard kind of flap. You don't need to go and get a, uh, an in-use cover. They're, I think they're just a little bit more expensive. So these little receptacle testers are only about four or five bucks each. You can just plug it into any receptacle and see whether or not it's wired correctly. So if the, the two lights on the right, or the middle and the right light are on, then that's the correct wiring. So if you reverse the hot in the ground or the hot in the neutral, or if there's an open hot, open neutral, open ground, it'll let you know with uh, a different lighting code on here. And GFCIs like this can be very finicky and they can trip very easily. Um, I know in Brian's trailer, there was a receptacle somewhere and it didn't work. Um, I think it was like in the kitchen and he's like, this receptacle, it doesn't work. And I'm just like, all right, so there's probably a GFCI that was tripped. And it was the GFCI in the bathroom that was tripped, reset it, and then the receptacle in the kitchen works. So it can be um, kind of annoying how people will wire things sometimes, but it's, uh, it's all in the name of saving a few, a few dollars here and there. Because if you extrapolate it, um, hundreds of homes at you know, $10 each home, that could be thousands of dollars over the course of you know, many years. So that's why they do it. Awesome, guys. I hope there's some really good nuggets there for you. And if you want to follow a lot of these projects that I'm doing in much more real time, I post lots of Instagram stories and photos. Um, so definitely follow me on Instagram at handyman with an underscore because I couldn't get at handyman. Somebody else has it with like four followers. But anyways, awesome guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. Talk to you soon. Peace.